Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano and I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is nutrition, my, one of my favorite uh, missions. If you follow my, uh, my YouTube channel and my blog, uh, chefonamission.com. So I got an, another interesting email. Um, I subscribe to a lot of industry uh, emails. And if you just watched my video previously on how I call out the baking professor, instructor, at the Culinary Institute of American Greystone, because I don't think his cake is healthy. And he calls it healthy. Okay? So, new email comes out. CIA, Culinary Institute of America, CIA instructor shows students healthy, healthy can mean tasty. So I'm like, okay, so let me click this thing here. And uh, balancing flavor and nutrition, chef's, chef's secret. Um, focusing on flavor is one of the best health strategies in the kitchen. One of the things we teach our students is that food is really all about flavor. And if you sacrifice flavor just to make something healthy, no one is going to want to eat it. That makes sense. Everything has to be flavorful. The nice thing about, the nice thing about healthy foods is they can be so flavorful. It's just, it's amazing the world of possibilities when you're talking about fresh, vibrant, healthy food. It's amazing. You don't need to do much to it, okay? You don't need to do much to it at all. So, um, let's see, the instructor here is Bill Byra, B-R-I-W-A. Uh, uh, teaches students to explore ways to make foods, foods more flavorful. So, here's my critique, and of course, whatever my critique is worth. Um, but here's my critique on what this article, and maybe this article doesn't say the full picture. Maybe it doesn't, maybe it does. Um, but I typically find that chefs, especially, don't know much about nutrition. They don't know much about healthy food because we've been taught, we've been taught that sugar, fried foods, high fat content foods, we're taught to pack in flavor, we're taught that salt, it packs in flavor. So we're just automatically trained through our whole culinary career Oh, something needs to taste better, add more butter. Something needs to, you need to pick up the flavor, add more salt. So it's just automatically what we're instilled with over and over and over and over again. I mean, it's just, it's insane. This, I mean, the standard process in most restaurants and hotels is you just take a case of butter and put it in a pot and just start melting it. Just have butter all day long to use on everything. And salt is at every single station. So there's, there's, never, there's never like a downfall. It's always just like, oh, the butter's right there. Let me just use it. I mean, when you start making some of these dishes like risotto, the fat content, I was taught at places I worked that the risotto, the mashed potato, should be equal parts butter and equal part potato for mashed potatoes, or risotto equal part butter, equal part rice. When you start thinking about the, the caloric intake, it's just, it's astonishing. But it's full of flavor. So most guests don't complain. <clears throat> And most chefs are like, oh, I'm serving the best food. I'm getting all these great reviews. I'm serving the best food. And it's just, it's, it's, no, you're not. You're, you're just, you're taking, you're taking advantage of a system that's been set up because you can't think for yourself, gee, maybe those potatoes shouldn't be 50% butter. Maybe I should think about doing something a little healthier than that. So back to the article. It says, when you understand the concept of nutrient density, I love that nutrient dense food. That's my favorite. Um, that some foods have a lot of nutrition per 100 calories. Broccoli comes to mind. While well, others, like a pat of butter, have a lot of calories and not much nutrition. Okay, the guy's on the right step so far. When you start to develop critical thinking skills and empower chefs to create quality food, they're going to provide healthier menu options. Okay, so we have conversations about nutrient density and healthy menus. We're also hoping to change the way people think about food and the misperception that healthy foods mean less flavorful. Okay, if you know my restaurant, I try to do as healthy food as possible and a lot of, lot of flavors, a lot of different ethnicities. Um, for instance, the public needs to demonize certain ingredients such as fats and carbohydrates. So the public, you know, is trying to avoid carbs and high, uh, fats and carbohydrates is what he's saying. And he goes, fats are not actually evil, but some are absolutely healthier than others. Okay, so some fats might be healthier than others. That That is true. Uh, so I tell chefs if they use fat to always leverage the flavor that brings the fat to the dish. So, uh, there's a funny story I like to share. We hosted a chef from Greece here on campus and when we asked them the number of vegetable dishes that Greeks have in their repertory, he said, we are poor people and we can't afford much high quality, we can't afford, so we eat a lot of vegetables, okay? So, I also mentioned it was surprising that Greeks consume about 50 per, 52 times more olive oil than we do in the U.S. And this is the Greek chef's response. He goes, how do you think we choke down so many vegetables? 
So you're taking something that's very healthy, a veggie, and you're loading it with fat, okay? Doesn't make sense. Fat, fat is fat, okay? Let, let's just be honest about that. There's a certain amount of calories in fat, and it's a high amount of calories compared to other foods. Fat is fat. Okay, so olive oil may be, have, maybe have some phytochemicals in it because olive is really a fruit, okay? But here's the big deal on fat. You, once you extract fat from its original source, it's, it's, it's really not good fat. Yeah, sure, the fat in almonds and walnuts and stuff like that, that's good fat. The uh, fat in olive oil is great. But once you start extracting and you separate the fat out, it's not really a high quality food anymore. It's just, it's just not. It, it's, it's, it's extracted, it's refined fat. And the cal calories from that fat adds up extremely quickly. Now, I'm not saying I don't cook with olive oil or season with olive oil, use olive oil in my food, because I do, but I'm very conscious of the amount that I'm using. I never, never, very, very, very rarely do I ever use butter in my food. So it's just olive oil as a seasoning. Just as a seasoning, and a lot of chefs are using other types of oils to cook with, like soybean oil, um, <clears throat> soybean oil, corn oil, veggie oil, cottonseed oils. All these oils are so high in omega sixes that they throw your balance off. You need these heart healthy fats and these brain fats, these omega threes. So you do need these fats. However, the oils that chefs are using to cook with just don't have. Um, it's a wrong balance. Believe it or not, out of all the oils out there, oh, uh, canola oil. But yeah, and of course, you have to make sure it's. GMO free, uh, expeller pressed, organic. So there's, you gotta make sure it's high quality canola. But believe it or not, canola oil is one of the best oils for the omega-3 ratios versus the other oils. So yes, there are better fats. He is right. I don't know how in depth they get with fats. Now, coconut oil is a medium chain fat. So when you eat fat, you put fat, the fat goes to storage. It goes for later use in your body. So coconut oil is unlike the other fats because coconut oil, when you consume it, it's available for immediate energy. Your body can use it for immediate energy. So I hope they're talking about the difference of fats like that is what I hope they're talking about. But here's something surprising he says. He knows, he goes, they're willing to use the oils, but he goes, let's cut back a little bit on the salt, right? Because, you know, because that's going to make a difference. Here's the difference. I would have liked him to say in this article that there's a different quality of salts, and we try to use a nutrient-dense salt, because there are nutrient-dense salts. Some salts can have up to 80 minerals in it, 50 to 80 minerals, and that's not uncommon from high-quality salt, from raw salt that's unprocessed, that's, that's uh, not, not overheated or not heated to a certain extent, and, and then chemicals added to it. So there's differences in salts. But the real issue is here, he's saying, well, we need to cut back salt because you know, salt is bad, but let's just lather on the fat. So here's the point I want to make, fat versus salt. We all think that salt is causes high blood pressure. I'm not saying salt's good, believe me, I'm not saying salt's good. You should monitor your salt, you shouldn't, you know, absolutely. But to say, well, let's load our veggies with fat, load with olive oil, is, is, is counterproductive because the more fat you eat, the thicker your blood gets. It gets the viscosity of your blood up. Because you're adding fat, you're adding all this dietary fat to your system and it gets absorbed into your blood and it thickens your blood. So what happens when your blood is thick, it's harder for your heart to pump. When it's harder for your heart to pump, you have higher blood pressure. So back to the fats again, you've really got to focus on the amount of fat. Sure, the quality, is, is, the quality of fat is without a doubt the first thing you need to look at. But then the qual qual uh, quantity of fat is a major, just because you have good healthy fat like olive oil that you think is healthy, doesn't mean you just lather all your vegetables with it. Doesn't mean it. You, taking a salad, Dr. Clapper, he has some great videos on YouTube where he's like, you're taking this heart healthy salad and you're lathering in olive oil and you're not doing any good. It's now an unhealthy, unheart healthy salad because the olive oil is very binding in your blood it's it's not what you want it's an extracted fat so you know people the fat you eat is the fat you wear okay that's one of the sayings the fat you eat is the fat you wear so then he talks about cutting portion sizes down so let's maybe take whatever food and just cut the portion size down right well excuse me a french fry is a french fry no matter if you have a full portion or a half portion it's still a bad food it's still a, tox a toxic food. It's still going to cause a chain reaction in your body, no matter if you eat one french fry or the whole basket of french fries. So it's not about cutting portions down because the healthiest foods you can eat unlimited. You can just keep eating them. I eat sometimes 4,000 calories a day. 
and it's not about cutting portions for me. The healthiest diets out there, the doctors that are making a difference, the doctors that are actually actually fighting diseases, they, a lot of them prescribe diets where there's no calorie restriction or you can eat unlimited amounts of food because if you're eating the right food, we all hear these diets, like even Weight Watchers has these zero point foods, right? Because there's zero points because you can eat as much of them as you want and there's no consequences. Okay, you take stuff like mushrooms. Mushrooms are so low, low calorie. A portobello mushroom. You take greens; they're so low in calories. Um, fruit, other veggies like broccoli, they're, they're low in calories. They're packed with nutrients. You can eat. You can really satiate yourself. You can fill up a massive bowl. I eat a pound of spinach a day. Pound a day. A pound a day is two gallons of spinach like this. Okay, I'm not watching how much I'm eating. I want it, the, the only thing I'm watching is I want a lot of food because I want to get full. I don't want to have to be hungry in between meals. We're just going to start snacking. I want foods that are going to fill me up. I'm having two and a half of these for breakfast right now. I'll probably have more before lunch. But this is that's going to that's going to fill me up. It's going to it's going to satiate me it's going to satisfy my hunger a lot of people are on these diets and they're cutting portion sizes down and they're they're still hungry and they're eating these they're eating these these these, these ridiculous foods like weight watchers oh i can have a slice of pizza it's worth a couple points or how many ever points it is i'm sorry whether you have three slices of pizza or one slice of pizza it's still bad there's still high saturated fat in there there's white flour there's sugar in there who knows what kind of oil they're adding in there it's it's still bad food bad food is bad food toxicity poison is poison at any level. So if you're eating something that's not good for you and it's considered a poison or toxic, here's the main determination. The food you eat, it causes one or two things in your body. Cell growth or cell death, okay? Veggies, fruits, raw foods, things like that are gonna promote cell growth. Your cells like that. Things like french fries, burgers, things like that are gonna promote cell death. So whether you have two bites out of the burger and two french fries or the whole burger and the whole french fries, cells are still dying. That's the bottom line. Alcohol, they're still dying. So putting, cutting portion sizes does not work. It's a matter of getting the right foods on your plate and eating as much as you want so you're satiated. So I'm not really sure you know, that that's pretty much, it's a short article. So may, may, maybe they're teaching stuff in, something different here. Maybe maybe they misrepresented him in this article. I don't know. This Again, this is my personal critique. But what I saw here, you know, watch the fat, watch the salt, and get and portion size is not is not the answer. Cutting portion sizes is not the answer. So um, I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thank you for watching this video. If you like my videos, please hit like, subscribe to my channel, and pass it on.